Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. It is Tuesday. Thank you very much for watching the show and thank you for sharing it with your friends as well and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Alan Ruff and Hugh McDonald are joined by Darren Jackson as their studio guests. And here's what we're going to talk about. Cyprus and Kazakhstan on the horizon for Scotland. Here's the squad that Steve Clark unveiled today. Uh, you can tell us what you make of that, Rafi. Yeah, well, it's obviously a much of a much. Obviously, the McKenna's back in there, the problem position for us. We're all hoping that he can be the one that, that settles down that back four. But uh, it's a much of a much for me. I, I, I would I think the biggest debate is at three at the back, is it four at the back? We really need to know what formation we're going to be playing, and that's why I hope the next two games coming up, we have a settled side. I, I really do hope that some people really stamp their authority on the next two games, because we need to go into uh, the games in March, winning games. And the big news is there's no Kieran Tierney, and Steve Clark revealed that was Arsenal's call. Kieran, uh, Arsenal. But Kieran's got a, an ongoing issue that Arsenal are keen to address in the next international break and Arsenal asked it's not a selector. Yeah, it's a little bit frustrating. It's obviously frustrating for Kieran as well, but we have good cover in that position. Should we be angry at his omission, Hugh McDonald? No, we can be frustrated and uh, can be disappointed, but in the, in the real world, there's no point in being angry. Um, <coughs> going forward, Steve Clark's got a deal with Arsenal hopefully over a couple of years with, 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 with Kieran Tierney so there's no great point in, in <coughs> throwing toys out of the pram over this the club has obviously decided that they want to do uh, continued rehab work on, on Kieran Tierney there's not much point in arguing actually it's just getting on with it another thing as well is it's not as if you know, he's the centre forward, it's got, the only centre forward we've got that's scoring goals, or the only centre half we've got. <clears throat> We're all right in that position, so I think he's right to, to tolerate it. Yeah, he's got another A to deal with, uh, Darren, which I think is the most difficult, which is apathy. Yeah. Um, the, I think the biggest problem, the biggest, I think if this was the playoffs, he would be in. I think Stevie would really... I argue with the Arsenal manager and said, I need him for the playoffs. I think that they've just taken a stance just now that <clears throat> we'll just go with what we've got just now because you've obviously got a Champions League winner at left back, so you've not really got a major problem there. Um, but I do think if it was the playoffs, Stevie would have a, a, a more a discussion and be more forceful um, with picking Kieran Tierney. Yeah, I, I think the decision coming... Um, and I'm only giving you an insight into chats that I've had, um, Hugh. I think Kieran Tierney is going to be left of centre if they're going to play a certain way. I think he's the two centre halves. He's left of mm -hmm. centre in that team, and Andy Robertson's left back. Yeah, well, that'd be one way of getting yeah. both into the team. Yeah. And and when when we're talking about Scotland, we know that, that, that what, literally what Stevie Clark's got to do is manage. I mean, he can't obviously he can't recruit, so he's got to coach and he's got to he's got to look at what he's got <coughs> and say, well, these are the pieces I've got. How do they fit together best? You're going to say to yourself, I've got a player at Arsenal and a player at Liverpool. I really want them in my team, and that that would be to me the only way to get in the team because see this idea of playing uh, Kieran Tierney at right back, I don't think really works, and playing uh, you know playing Robbo uh, at left back. We can maybe in front of or one of that doesn't work either. So yeah, it would be a three-five-two or a three-five-one-one for me. Yeah, uh, and as time progresses, we are all keeping <coughs> our fingers crossed, Ruffy, that suddenly you start to see a Steve Clark team, which mm. is eight or nine stonewall certainties and two or three who suddenly force themselves into his thoughts. Yeah, well, I think it's that's why it's important. You know, this first game that we play, the eleven guys on the park are the living guys that he thinks 
are the ones that are going to be there or thereabouts in March. And, and you get them the two games. You don't start pulling people out. And you know, I would like to think he's made up his mind. I think we all got a good idea who should be in midfield. I think we've all got a good idea who should be in defence. Up front is a toss of the coin. Uh, but I really do think we need to go into these two games strong and we need to win them. No draws or anything like that. wins going into March. Yeah, and of course, uh, even the manager is hoping that he can get a settled 11. Exactly that. Just trying to get a little bit of familiarity. Most of the same old faces in the squad again. Uh, they'll get used to me, I'll get used to them. So, no, I look forward to two good games. Yeah, let's hope we get some positive results <laughs> just to give us a little lift in the country and hope for uh, all roads leading to March and, of course, the, the playoffs. Uh, now we switch our attention from international football to domestic issues and, of course, uh, the race is on to see which half of Edinburgh gets the best candidate for the uh, Hearts or Hibs job because it looks as <clears> if <throat> it could be a race. Is it a race for Stephen Robinson? I think, in my opinion, yes. Um, I think he's the best candidate. Um, you see other managers that are in the frame, and they're good. They're good managers. Um, Alan Stubbs has been mentioned again. We did a fantastic job there. Um, I'm sure the fans would love Gordon Strachan, who I think would do a fantastic job. But I think the the best candidate would for the job he's done at Motherwell, um, for the the way he's changed the way they play, um, his style, his man management. His enthusiasm, I think Stephen Robinson's the, the, the top target. And do you think if <clears throat> Hearts or Hibs get Stephen Robinson, that's top six finish and above your city rivals? Well, I, you can't guarantee anything, but I think you're getting a good, a good manager. That you're, going, you're going to go the right way. Um, I think he gets the most, his recruitment's fantastic. I think he gets the most out of the players that he has. Um, I've watched him on the training pitch. His enthusiasm, his attention de to detail is, is wonderful. And um, so I think there's no doubt that for me, he should be the top target for both. Let me ask that question to you, Hugh. <clears throat> well, uh, it, it, all management's a risk. All management, and all, you know, all recruitment of managers are a risk. But what you've got to look at is Robinson the knowns, what you know about Robinson. And you know that he can manage at a level uh, where it's not a big budget. You know he can buy good players. You know he can organise teams. And you know that players play for him. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And he's also managed to switch styles as well. So, yeah, I think if you're buying, I mean, if you're bringing Robinson, we know there's no guarantee. <coughs> But you're, you're actually, you're, you're shopping, you're in the right shop. You're buying the right stuff if you're getting them. Yeah, OK, let's have a look at the odds for Hearts. First of all, uh, to see where he stands, he's 6-4 to four on. 7-2, uh, to two, Jack Ross, Austin McPhee out there at 6-1, to one, David Moyes at 8-1, to one, and I don't think anybody is putting any money on David Moyes becoming <laughs> the Hearts or the Hibs manager. Uh, and if you are, uh, then you're a millionaire who's just ruining tenors right, left and centre. And, <laughs> and, and if Roy Keane turns up... <laughs> Castle, I'm taking this entire <laughs> just, team to Disney World. <laughs> say, if you back, if you back Roy Keane, I've got a bridge to sell you. <laughs> and, uh, and John Robertson at twelve to one for me is amazing. Uh, uh -huh. Ruffy, I mean, I'm a big fan of Robles. I think well, the only thing he got wrong at Hearts first time around was Vladimir Romanov. <laughs> yeah, I think we all know that. But I mean, the more Anne Budge comes into these press conferences and she keeps saying that I want a high-profile manager. I don't think that brings Robo into that consideration. I think she's thinking higher than that. I don't know what she's. I don't know what she's thinking about, but she wants a very, very high profile. I don't agree with you, Rafi. I think from what she said yesterday, she's looking for experience. I think it's important, but I don't think it's a be all and end all. Um, we've seen we've seen it work before for others who've uh, come in without that. That said, Scottish football is a bit different, so uh, we won't be ignoring the the uh, impact of having Scottish football. Remember, this is a manager that got <coughs> to get them out yeah. of the mire. <coughs> I, I just feel fans being fans, you know, I've got a wee bit fed up, you know, Legends being the manager of the club and they want something different. That's just my opinion, I, I might yeah. be wrong, but I just feel Craig Levine hasn't helped his case any at all. You know, yeah, because but, I think supporters are... But with all due respect, Ruffy, Craig Levine shouldn't have got the job in the first place. Craig Levine's CV mm. did not suggest to anyone that he should have been the Hearts manager. Mm. Craig Levine suggested 
Craig Levine for the Hearts manager's job. I mean that. I mean that's it in a nutshell, Hugh. You, you know he wasn't he wasn't the ideal number one choice. And if you remember the <laughs> shambles that went on before it, suddenly they were looking at this one, that one, and then pff, out comes Craig Levine. Yeah, that, that ended up a situation. We're not we're not talking about hindsight. Here we, we spoke about it at the time. It was a mad situation where you you've got a director of football, you know, pointing himself. Great conflict of interest. Great, you know, the whole model disappeared. The whole model of the club disappeared. Then, so yeah, they're going to have to go back to basics. It's very interesting with Anne Budge talking about you know having a sporting director as well. How he or she will come in and uh, she was quite uh, clear about what areas that they thought they should be uh, on their recruitment sports science etc etc but how a manager works with a sporting director is, is crucial to any club yeah 100% they need to get on um, the, the manager needs to know he's going to sign players that he wants not gifted or not given to him and he has to put them in his team. There has to be a great relationship there. I'm not against, so he can get on with his work, <coughs> going and signing the players that they want, not not that he wants. Yeah. So um, as is this say, by committee or the manager saying, I w I've got a list. Get well, me, get me option one. If you can't get yeah, me that, I'll uh, take option two. Yes, probably, but they can have a, di a discussion about it. The, the, the sporting di director can come up with players and say, what do you think of him? What, yes, I like him. Yeah. No, he's not for me. But as long as the manager has the last say in it because yeah. he's coaching the players... That's and not always the case now, it's, Dan. Well, it's not, um, it's not the case. It's the, that's the players. You go and coach them and make them the, what we, we think they should be. Yeah. But I think the manager should always have the last say. <clears throat> Yep. Um, and now, if you want to look at what's happening across the city, uh, they are no better placed than Hearts for this one. Uh, they've got, undoubtedly, I think they'll get 50, 60 applicants, maybe even more looking for this job. Jack Ross, 2-1 to one on to be the favourite man uh, for the job. Stephen Robinson, 8-1. to one. Gordon Strachan, 8-1. to one. John Hughes, 12-1. to one. Alan Stubbs, 14-1. <coughs> to one. And David Moyes, 20-1 to one for the guy who's still throwing tenors <laughs> into the fire. Um, anyway, apart from, apart from anything else, I'll, I look at the, the, the list there, and I'll tell you right now, if they suddenly rolled out Gordon Strachan, <laughs> I would look and I'd say, wow, mm. Hibs mean business. They're not at that level anymore. No, and it'd be interesting to see what Gordon's views are, uh, are on it as well. You know, he would be the supporter's pick. There's no doubt about that. He's Hibs through and through. Uh, he, he certainly would have a, a better chance of attracting better players than it's what's been coming in in the last couple of years. So it's up to him. You know, I don't think they'll approach him anyway. I think... Jack Ross fits that bill. And see how left field. Oh, oh, see how oh left field. hold on. Ray Hugh, hey, hey. tape this. He's going, tape he's, this. Left field, he's going to talk about the Glen Afton manager who took them to the Scottish Cup final. Yes, yes. Hold on, wait see. for this. So we're going to, no. Hold on. The, the reason, the reason why going, we can wait. No, no. Right, go. No, if things weren't going the way they were up at Aberdeen with the new training ground and everything, Derek McInnes is the best job manager for, for both of them. If things weren't going so well up there, yeah, so it wasn't really worth waiting on that. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm just, uh, would, would, you not, would you, would you not say you'd be a good candidate? I've just, uh, well, I've just got, I've just got to apologise to everybody for wasting the last 45 <laughs> seconds of the programme, um, because if uh, if things weren't going so well down at Anfield, Jurgen Klopp would be fantastic uh, for Hibs or Hearts as well. Um, so, so Jack Ross, <laughs> he's thrown me off here. Oh, Jack Ross, is he the best? option they have then? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm still a Jack Ross sceptic, you know, I, 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 you know, I look at his CV, he talks the game well, he did very well at St Mirren, he had, he's went to the managerial graveyard as, as, as Sunderland. Uh, Was but, his record so bad at Sunderland, Hugh? I ask you that because yeah, I, I, I interviewed him I, you know, I, I interviewed him and spoke to him regularly when he was mm. putting together a winning championship side. Mm. And remember, by the way, a winning championship side for St Mirren in a league where they were not fancied to get out of it. Absolutely. Nobody I turned it round as well. Nobody was picking St Mirren, by the way. So that's the first part of it. And then from there, you had a lot of people looking at what he was doing <clears> there and saying the players were right behind them. Mm. So I, I look at Sunderland 
and you're talking about a, you know, a club that came within an ace of getting out of that, that division. Yeah, but it's a division that they, they really... If, I mean, I, I went down and, and watched them, Peter, and it's a terrible division for them to be in. It's a yeah. terrible division for, for Jack Ross to be in. It's, it's the land of the giants. For playing football. No, it's the land of the giants. I went down and yeah. watched them play against Portland, <clears> and, and it was like watching... You know, a basketball team up against the Munchkins. You know, it was like this uh, hugely physical side up against them. But he really had to get them out of that division. You know, uh, biggest budget, biggest club. You know, international players in his team as well. And I think, I mean, I know the specific di uh, difficulties at Sunderland, but that was a blow. That was that was a failure. And you know, there's no other way to say it. Yeah, um, Darren. Um, me for you talking about the job. I, I, I'd say Stephen Robinson for both of them. Yeah. Um, and I'm not on here to blow smoke up his uh, yeah. backside. Yeah, well, well, thanks for that. <laughs> um, but I think he's. But I think you're 100 percent right about Gordon Strachan. I was I was down in Coventry for two months, and it was absolutely wonderful. Every day in the training pitch, and everyone talks about going in the red zone now, because you're not allowed to go in the red zone. Um, you get taken out, Gordon. Every Tuesday, every every day, and every Tuesday, Thursday afternoon, you were out. It was a hundred percent, and it was just fantastic. That's my, what, the red zone. The, re the red zone when you when you, the heart rate monitors. You're not allowed to go into the the, the red zone now. Yeah. So it's um, uh, and I think that's too much now. And I, and I know that Gordon. Isn't he too keen on that either? Yeah. You've always got the red zone, you're playing tennis well, with Rafa. Honestly, Hugh, you will <laughs> never that's believe this, by the way. <laughs> if that's the case, I'm in, I'm in the red zone every week because I am doing doggies across the tennis court. I, I, need, I need to get somebody to help me. It's as simple as that. Anyway, you know that blank look in my face, and I thought, oh, here he is. He's got his technical term okay, okay. from his coaching manual. That's the danger of getting somebody on it knows something about football. <laughs> <laughs> Never go down that road yeah. again. Peter. I don't know why we said that. <laughs> I know that's against the policy. I, I know you said to me, but I went against your wishes. Um, okay, talking of, uh, well, here's the perfect answer before we finish this program because. I don't know about you, but Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I love Champions League football. Um, and I just wish we had Scottish clubs involved in it. So here we are. Here's the, here's the fixtures. Mm -hmm. And we've started an argument in the office here. We might as well bring it onto the programme. Because Gabriel, our reporter, is a big fan of Pep Guardiola. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of Pep Guardiola. But Manchester City, quite simply, uh, you know are expected to win games. Mm -hmm. Are they expected to win the league, uh, the, the Champions League? I say he was hired for that. Well, these are the games from today that we're looking mm -hmm. forward to, which is Liverpool, Genk, or Chelsea, Ajax are, are two cracking matches will be, uh, you can pick from which one I think I'm going to pick. I, I would pick Chelsea tonight. And, you know, I'm a Liverpool, big Liverpool fan, but I would pick watching Chelsea, Ajax tonight because I think it's a better game, Hugh. Yeah, I would as well. And I like the way... Um I had some scepticism a wee bit about Frank Lampard <laughs> getting the job after this little experience, but he's he's imposed a lovely style in, in Chelsea yeah. as well. They're good to watch, both good to watch. That would be, that'll be my game. Well, my team's playing tonight, but I'll take the other one. Yeah, yeah. My, my you, Dortmund, Dortmund, he's Dortmund. A big Mullen. Dortmund fan. Who do you, you must have a second team. Well, you must have a ninth team because you have <laughs> you have seven or eight that you don't want to offend, and then you must have a ninth team. Surely, <laughs> I love watching Pep's teams. Yeah. Um, I think they're absolutely wonderful mm -hmm. to watch. But I think you're right. I think they need to win the Champions League. Winning the league, yes, it's, it's great for them, the money they spend. But Pep's there. He's a, he's a manager. He's a, the biggest for me to win the Champions League. I think slowly but surely. I mean, you know what our fraternity is like, you. <laughs> They'll start to turn and say, well, wait a minute. Absolutely. All this super team, this lovely football, you gotta, you, you got to win the Champions League. That's what the Man City fans want. Mm. Uh, I think that's what Sheikh Masur wants as well. Right, I mean, he, he, we all, all due respect, you're not, you're not paying that money. to. I mean, the EPL is a big league with big returns, but you're not paying all that money just to win the EPL. And I think the way as well, Guardiola, and we know he's a great <clears> coach. <throat> There's no, cannot be any doubt about that. But we know he can he can get things wrong in big matches. You know he he, he can be too clever at times. I think in big matches. Yeah. And what it, what's come up is a lot of times in the Champions League semi-finals he's failed, and he'll not be allowed to continue. I think he's safe. Whatever he does at Man City. Yeah. But he'll not be allowed to get away with that with the press, I don't think. Yeah, uh, um, Atalanta <coughs> could be in for a hammering again, Rafi. I, I don't think I'm, you know, putting my neck on the line there. But what's your take on it? I think he, uh, I think he has to deliver the Champions League, and I think he has to deliver it this season. 
I think he'll believe that he, he will, you know. But for me, he's got the goalkeeper that can mm -hmm. win it for him. I still don't think he's got the centre-halves. Uh, and I would like to see an out-and-out centre-forward, the Lewandowski, something like that. I know Aguero's top-notch, mm -hmm. but I don't think he's got enough power behind that, you know. But uh, Paris Saint-Germain for me. What? Mm. Yep. Paris Saint-Germain to yep. win the Champions League? Yep. Yep. I'm sticking in with this. Manage by Gordon Strachan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ruffy. Ruffy. Jerry McKinnis. McKinnis is his number two. You can see it coming. You can see it coming. Well, I had to yeah. pause. <laughs> but, uh, suddenly the twist of it, Aberdeen McKinnis is on his way to PSG. Uh, listen, we like to talk about winners. Uh, let's uh, give you the names of the winners of our competition for Stevie Naismith's signed hearts top. Scott Allen signed a hips top for us as well uh, and here are the winners of the competition Join us on tomorrow night's programme when we have a signed Celtic top, signed by Kevin Bridges, no less. Uh, I caught up with Kevin at the weekend. You can follow us across all our social media outlets, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Facebook Live every day, Monday to Friday, and, of course, YouTube, where you can subscribe to the channel. And if you download the app, you'll get access to more unique video content, news and breaking news from world football right across the globe on our app as well as details of how you access our shop to get yourself one of those great legends, tops, or indeed canvas or print. So all that remains for me to say is uh, goodbye from uh, Hugh McDonald, uh, Darren Jackson, and of course, Derek McInnes's agent, Alan Ruff, <laughs> who's here on the show. Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs>